you might have just recently seen her being a fine ass boss bitch in the Drake video, which. Come on. Blowing, blowing cigar smoke out her mouth, killing it. So, without further ado, please welcome Miss Tiffany Haddish. Right there, you hear that shit, you be like, ooh, that's my sound, bitch. <laughs> yes, get it! You be standing up on the wall all night like this party, <laughs> whack as fuck. And as soon as that song come on, oh, these niggas is broke. <laughs> ding, 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 big video! That's my shit! <laughs> <laughs> she special requested that, if you couldn't tell. That's my favorite little ratchet song. <laughs> Yo, thank you so much. You just came from Boston. Yeah. You made the time <laughs> to be here on stage in Harlem. That's for you, girl. Like, I appreciate that. That's because I like you. You cool people. You cool, you cooler people. Can we take a, a shot? Can we do a toast? Oh, yes. So, y'all got uh, y'all cups in hand if y'all want to take a sip. If it's not a shot, just take a big gulp. <laughs> Beyond Swallow it. What you, <laughs> what you want to toast to? I want to toast to success, love, and happiness. And I, I hope that every single one of you in this room that take a sip or a swallow or a gulp <laughs> enjoys nothing but happiness and success for the rest of your existence. Oh, that's beautiful. Toast. Chin chin, chin chin. Toast. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. God damn. What did you have? I thought it was peach Ciroc, but that. <laughs> oh, you might have had that Ciroc 10. That was Ciroc 10. Is it mixed with tequila, bitch? I God don't know. Damn. I can't speak that, on that. That's a disinfectant right there. <laughs> that's going to clean me out. That's... I was a little bit congested, but I feel like everything is opening now. It's opening. It's medicine. It's medicine, yeah, it's really. Good. It's the new Mucinex. <laughs> Mmm. I feel hair growing on my chest. <laughs> no, that's not hair. That's my nipples. Anyway, <laughs> you got you got hairy nipples too? N no, I got I got fuzzy nipples. Okay. Everybody, you're supposed to have a little bit of hair coming out your pores. That's what keep your pheromones, and that's what attracts the opposite sex. Yes. Do you know what your pheromone smell is? My pheromone smell well, is success. It's okay. Success. Yeah. My smell is success. Smelling <laughs> like money. <laughs> yeah, when I was reading your credits, you know, it feels like you've tackled every field. Mm. Except for, you know, you and I have talked about this. Except for music. When's the album? What do you think about, like, mixtape? Your freestyle game is kind of sick. What's, what's okay, going on with that? Okay, hold up. First off, if you saw my special and you listened to the music that was playing in the introduction, in the ex extraduction, that's the exit, um, <laughs> you would have heard me rapping, because that's my song, uh, She Ready. So wh when does the album come out? She Ready from the Hood to Hollywood. My song, my album? Yes. I guess... Um, you know, I don't have a lot of time on my hands. You like, were <laughs> my whole my whole album will be like cut from voice memos. <laughs> like like you in prison? Like someone like I'm in prison and shit. I'll be in the bathroom on the toilet, like this track right here is the shit. <laughs> yeah, but that's a beat, bitch. <laughs> Drinking on this to rock X. Got me cleaned out all the way in the West. Woo! <laughs> Bars. Bars, bars, bars. I need, I need, I need a producer. Who, there, they need, first of all, I like to take a little like, roll call in the audience just to find out who we are. Cause you know, this is for creatives. A sip is for creatives who like to drink. <laughs> so just to, to find out how many actors are in the audience. Okay, actors. Y'all don't sound too confident. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I'm trying. Um, <laughs> how many directors? 
Okay, directors running shit. I heard a lot of female voices. I love that. Uh, producers. Yes. Music. Writers. Music producers. Music producers? Oh, girl, you out of luck. Oh, just one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just okay. DJ. Okay, I'm a that's DJ. what's up. Uh, what's, what's another one? Did I miss something? Oh, comedians. Okay. Three. And how many people just out here living? <laughs> that's my favorite ones. The ones that's just living life. Those be the ones I want to hang out with because they got the best motherfucking stories. This is true. The best stories. So those who aren't familiar with the uh, Civ, we just want to like take a look at the creative journey. So many times, like you know, I watch specials and things like that for some of my, from, from some of my favorite people, and it always goes from like, oh yeah, I was struggling, then I made it, <laughs> and I want to hear about like the grittiness of like the in between of it. So you have such a like one of the dopest stories ever, and you know you've worked, you've. Um, worked as an energy producer slash hype man. You've worked, you know, at Alaska Airlines. You had, you were living out your car. Like so many people I who don't. I worked at youth centers. I was a professional babysitter, a professional motivator of dope dealers. I was. Uh... <laughs> what does that look like? You gonna be safe. Don't worry about these police. You do what you need to do to feed your people. That's all I'm saying. Now make sure you in the house by midnight. Fuck them streets, nigga. You said dope dealers, plural? Was it like a group of people that was I, I dated multiple dealers. Because, oh. you know. Want to get caught? Say your motivation. Want to get caught, right? Want to get caught. And then I'm like, I got to re-up because I got to pay for these <laughs> acting classes. So, so <laughs> you've had multiple... Diverse jobs. It hasn't been. Over, yeah, I didn't get no success. acting scholarship or nothing like that. So my Scott, like I had to, you know, be a motivator. To what was what was have money? What was the hardest part? Just given all these jobs that you've had, what was the hardest part for you about like breaking through? The hardest part, I guess, the, it's so many hard parts. It is. It's a lot of hard parts. Like, um. Am I picking the right thing to do? Am I picking the right gigs? Am I putting myself... As an myself, actress or as a comedian? As an actress, as a comedian, all that. Like, because as a comedian, you know, you can perform in... Uh, it, it, okay, in L.A., you can perform in maybe three venues in one night, mm -hmm. right? And that's if you start at 6 o'clock. And then by midnight, maybe you up at some spot in Hollywood and there's two people sitting in the audience and you're like, should I be doing this right now? Am I wasting my time? It's only two people sitting here. But then I would be telling myself, you know what? Fuck it. These two people, if I can get one of these two people to laugh, I'm on the right path. You know? So I would get up in front of them anyways. And I just think of it like I would think of it as an audition. Like, because auditions are, I think auditions are kind of, like some people hate auditioning, like hate it with a passion. But I find really, you know what? Hold up. <laughs> I bet you act right after that. Get it together, sound guy. I'm a mess. <laughs> I'm honest, though. I'm honest. I personally find auditions <laughs> perfect to be a bad hand job. No, I find auditions. <laughs> No, I personally find auditions, like some of them, sometimes I really, like when you go on like four auditions in one day, that means you gotta learn four different scripts, you know, uh, like sides or whatever. And be and four different in, people. And bring in four different people. But what I, I, when I started, like at first I used to hate them. At first I used to be like, man, I fucking hate auditions. I can't stand this. And then these people don't even know what they really want. And, and at the end of the day, a lot of the times those producers and directors, they don't know what they want. Or they do know who they want, got the, got the offer out to them, but not sure if they can get them. So you like the backup plan, or maybe you show them something different, right? So then I always try to figure out how can I be my best self? And then I started saying to myself, you know what, when I go into these auditions, I'm just gonna be Tiffany Haddish in every damn thing that I do. And then I'll just be the best Tiffany Haddish and try to bring out some of the characteristics that it's saying in this script. And I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna play with these motherfuckers. I'm gonna crack jokes, even if it's a drama. I'm gonna be the most hilarious, dramatic bitch. I'm gonna make them feel like, like it was casting directors that would call me in for 
roles that were clearly written for a white woman with blue eyes, blonde hair, and big titties, and they, sh they would call my little titty brown skin, brown eyes, black hair stuff in because they would say I was refreshing, a breath of fresh air, just something different, give a different perspective of it. And I would always make sure, like, know your lines, know your stuff. And even if you don't know the lines, like, know, be, know, know the story. If you can, because your job as a performer, as an actor anyway, is to be telling a story. You're telling someone's life, right? This is a slice of someone's existence. I learned that from Margie Hayburn, acting studio, and that was expensive as hell. Thank Shout out you. To them. <laughs> Thank you, Hennessy, for helping me with that. And I'm not talking about the alcohol beverage. That's a dope dealer. Anyway. <laughs> I got to start giving my shout outs because these niggas are getting out of jail, you know what I'm saying? So, get them lined up. Got to start giving, showing my gratitude off the top. They're going to be like, remember what I did? I, I, I pumped your business up, nigga. I promoted for you, hen. Like, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> well, like, going to be a lot of truth in this. Always. But, but good facts, take notes. But like even with auditions, like like you said, people are just, and that's something I had to learn too, is like people just want you to be good. So they're not nobody's against you. I think I used to get like super nervous in auditions. I still do. And now being on the other side of it, it's like you just want somebody to be good. Like a job interview, yeah. nobody wants somebody to come and be there and be like, I ain't I ain't got shit to offer really. But right. on an audition, you want someone to kill it. So someone like you is just like, you're making them laugh after seeing multiple people a day and you're bringing something new and fresh and, and that's so important. Yeah, it's refreshing. That, that's what you want to like, that, what I've learned from like talking to different casting directors too, because they do see like, probably 40, 50 people within a two to three hour period, you know? And it can be really annoying, especially seeing the same girl. Like you ever go to an audition and you're like, all these bitches look like me. <laughs> like, do you know my daddy? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, so you're seeing the same person over and over. So when someone comes in and you have good room, like good room is like when you walk in, you're like, hi, what's your name? What's your name? How you doing? Look make eye contact with every single person in the room, you know? Uh, how was your day so far? How your day been going so far? Like, make that little small talk. That, that little bit of small talk, that, like, one minute of small sure. talk is so good. That makes an impression because it gives them a, a, a perspective of who you are. Like, because you got to think about it. You're going into a place trying to get a job where you could be possibly working with people seven days to five days a week, 12 hours a day, and they got to figure out in three minutes, do I want to be around this chick yep. all that time? Yep. Is this going to be a cool person to work with? Is this she going to make the workplace like a fun place? Or is she going to be like annoying-ass, diva-ass motherfucker? Yes. But is she going to be an annoying-ass diva? Take mine, take mine. If she going to be an annoying diva, can she bring it? You know what I'm saying? Is she going to be like a sourpuss? it doesn't matter if she going to bring it. Like, can you bring this character to life? Can you make me see this? So, like... But I'm a, I guarantee you, nobody wants to work with an asshole. Nope. We all got them already. So no. I don't want to work with yours. Say that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody want to work with somebody that's fun to work with and cool. So try, like, the best thing is just always put your best foot forward. And, you know, it's going to be days you tired. I know mm -hmm. it's days I be so tired. And I know I be acting funky. I know I be funky. And I tell everybody on my team, I'm sorry, y'all. But I don't feel so good today. I might be demonized. <laughs> this is not the real me. This is the tired, sleepy tip. As long as you communicate it. Yeah, let them know off the top. I'm going to be quiet. I'm going <laughs> to... No, I don't want that shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm always apologizing immediately after. Well, before that, because... You've been broke as fuck. You have not been super that. broke. You've Why you gotta put it out there like broke. that? Just because I mean, your daddy was a doctor, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Who was very good, by the way. He was. He, he I've been. Right. I've been to his office before. Yeah, right. Before yeah, I even knew yeah. who you was. Don't hype him. He's not here. But um. Whatever. You gotta however, honor your. You gotta honor your ancestors. I guess. Yeah, he's my ancestor. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and that hurt my feelings when you was like, you you been broke as fuck, like. But that's real because I've been broke as fuck too. And yeah, I but feel like you, know, you ain't never been as broke as me. I have never been as broke as you. I can promise you that. <laughs> but I have been. But I have been. 
Bitch, you been broke, and I admire it, because you here, bitch. You killing this shit. <laughs> yep. But I have been in credit card debt, and I remember my first investment. Like, I remember my first, like, I when, couldn't even when get I found a credit out, card. She's like, credit card debt, <laughs> like. <laughs> Black privilege. <laughs> have you ever been to the county building, Issa? Have you ever been to the county building, Issa? <laughs> That's broke as fuck. When you sitting in the county building trying to be bilingual and shit, talking to these social workers. Senorita, senorita. Mi amo es Tiffany. Mi amo Tiffany, Tiffany Haddish, did you call me? You said it's Tiffany. That's Tiffany, right? That's me. I'm just trying to get this section eight, ma'am. I just, I'm homeless right now. Just. If you could give me a hotel voucher, where, like, something. <laughs> so being that broke, <laughs> what was your first, like, what did you feel like was, because it's, it's hard, like, what was your first investment? Like, because money, it's required to, to be able to, like, have a launching off point. And for me, it was, like, using the credit cards to invest in a camera and editing. So what was your first investment? You know, being poor, like having no money and being like, I need, I know I need to invest. I know I need to find the money for this. What paid off? It was a, I got a hair weave and an acting class. Thank <laughs> you a to you. I got a weave and an acting class. Uh, I paid, uh, I paid $50 for the hair. Where and, did you get it from? Uh, from <laughs> Tiffany's Beauty Supply in Hawthorne. I figured if I buy it from a place that's based off my name, I, and I can only be supporting myself. <laughs> then I got my I got my hair weaved in Inglewood by this lady. She said she charged me $115 and I gave her a $10 tip. Okay. 10%. Yup. Uh, and she nine. took she took eight hours to do it. I was mad as fuck. Mind you, this is 1999. Well, weaves weren't as like popping. I know. It, I was mad. I was like, this, I don't know why bitches do. Why did Aaliyah do this? Because I had read somewhere that Aaliyah had a weave. And Aaliyah I thought, had a weave this whole time? I thought she had tracks in the back, bitch. I was like, if she had tracks, I'm going to get full head. I'm going to kill it. Okay. <laughs> that, was my, that was my rationale. And, um, Shout out to Aaliyah. Shout out to Aaliyah. Aaliyah, that's one of my, you know, she inspired me. I mean, she could write letters. I could barely write words at the time. So. <sighs> okay, we'll talk about. <laughs> you making me reflect. So then I was like, I needed to act. I knew that I needed, like, I needed to get in there, right? Like, I, like, because somebody was telling me, okay, so. I was doing the stand-up comedy, like I had been doing stand-up comedy, and I catch the bus to the comedy clubs, and like different comedians would give me rides. I was 15 when I and started. And how did you even know to like pick? Like, did you say, "Oh, did you go to a comedy club and say, hey, put me on'?" Like, no, I was getting in trouble in school for talking too much, and my social worker was getting tired of coming up to the school and was like, "You got two choices this summer: you can go to Laugh Factory Comedy Camp, or you can go to psychiatric therapy because something is wrong with your ass." And I chose the comedy camp, and um, there, that's when I learned like communication skills, and I learned confidence, and learned stage presence, and how to like write uh, jokes out, and like when to be funny, when not to be funny, and like it really helped me. Per like for me personally, it was like a, the best group counseling ever, because it was other foster youth in there, and other kids that were being going through things and damage, and then there was a few kids that like had the good life, but then they ended up in psychiatric therapy, Amanda Bynes, and we, <laughs> am I snitching? No. Cause that shit is, you can look it up. That was in the news. We was in the same class is what I'm saying. And, what, I'm telling the truth. Yeah, tell the truth, shame the devil. Tell the truth a lot. I do. Maybe I do that too much, but whatever. At least you know you're getting facts. <laughs> Some people don't like it. But anyways, so um, 
from that class, I learned so much. And then I started going up to the comedy club like when I wasn't mas I was mascotting too. I was a school mascot because yeah. I thought that's how I was going to get me a football player boyfriend. But turns out they don't want to fuck the mascot. They <laughs> Nobody wants to be the assistant mascot. So that was a problem. And um, But then I ended up eventually getting paid to be the mascot, so that was cool. And then um, I started, when I had like days off or whatever, I'd go up to the Laugh Factory, do jokes, catch the bus up there, because I had a bus pass, because when you a foster kid, they give you free bus pass and stuff. That's what they do in LA anyways. And um, so I took advantage of that and tried to surround myself by people that were doing the things that I wanted to do. And at that time in my life, I just wanted to tell jokes. I just wanted to feel free. Like when I'm on stage is where I feel the most safe, I feel the most free. I feel like, you know, I got the microphone, I got the power and everybody's listening. And even if nobody wants to listen or they talk mess or they want to hurt me, I got a room full of witnesses to uh, vouch for me that I hope tell the truth. So what do you feel like is your um, style? Cause even hearing you talking about that, like, you know, you had to, you, when you had to have a moment where you were like, I'm funny, and I know you, you used uh, humor as a defense mechanism early yeah. on to basically it's still I still brand. use it as a defense mechanism. But when did you feel like, oh, I have a unique style. I know what my style is, and this is what I'm bringing to the table. Like, when did you discover that, and, and what do you feel like your style is? I, you know, to be honest with you, I'm still figuring out my style. I'm still growing, and, like, every year it changes it metamorphosizes a little bit i'm still uh i you know people tell me i'm a storyteller which yeah i love to i love to tell stories i love to tell like about my experiences and the hard ones and the fun ones in the most uh, fun kind of way like and that's how i deal with a lot of issues so i guess i'm a storyteller and um uh, a truth sayer and I, I really, to be honest, I don't know what my style is. I'm just me. I'm just Tiffany Haddish. I just bring me to the table. That's what it is. Maybe I'm creating some new shit. Probably not. Uh, maybe I don't. I don't know. I mean, I I've studied like so many comedians. I've studied so many different styles of comedy. I remember when I first started taking comedy, I started researching, like going to the library, go to the Inglewood Library, and go up in there, little art comedy section, and watch these VHS tapes and stuff of all these different comics. And like, I would watch Lenny Bruce, and and I would watch uh, the, uh, Milton Berle and Lucille Ball doing her her comedic acting, and I would watch Mom. Mabley and I would, I would watch Red Fox and, and Richard Pryor and like just constantly just sitting there just watching these people and white people I never fucking heard of but they was in the comedy section in the library so that must mean they do something good and what I noticed is what everybody was fearless mm -hmm. and so I just said well let me just be fearless if nothing else I'll be fearless and and when I was in that comedy camp you know uh, Richard Pryor told me that you know uh People don't come to comedy shows because they want to hear about your problems or politics or religion or any of this. They come to have fun. So when you're on stage, have fun. So putting those two together, if I have fearless fun, I, I feel like I can't lose. You are. One of the things, I mean, being fearless is just like such a, it's so easy to say, but to do is a different I thing. I know, like, it make you want to pee on yourself a little bit. And like, so much of being a comedian is like, you have to go on stage, because people are like, oh, do comedy. And I'm like, no, I could never do that, because I, it, the embarrassment is too real. And every comedian is like, you got to bomb on stage. Yeah, you got to take a lot of L's. You got to take L's. So That's what you make you strong. First, can you talk about your first L and how you took it? Like, because I would quit. If I took an L and people were like, Mm, boo. I would be like, okay, well, this is not made for me. Now, <laughs> one time, one time I took an L on television, on TV One. I did the show Who Got Jokes, right? The Bill, is that the Bill Bellamy? Bill yeah. Bellamy, Who Got Jokes. Okay, so in the LA division, I won. Then I had to go to Atlanta, right? And I had never, I had been to Atlanta before, but only like to party, turn up, just be like a little ratchet. Never to do comedy, right? <laughs> And so this was my first time doing comedy. I was in a convention center. There was thousands. This is my first time being in front of thousands and thousands of people. And let alone it just being people, but it was black people. Y'all know, y'all, we likes to judge. So I'm like, get your ass off the stage with your little cute self. Like, so that's what I felt like they was like looking at me that way, right? And so um, let me be honest with you. I was, 
I was, this was, I was so fearful. And I had bombed before then, but it would probably be like one white person like, boo, I don't get it. And then I explain it to him, right? <laughs> like, but a convention center full of, remember when we went to see Michelle Obama and how many people was there? So like half of that, all black. I would run. Okay, that's like five, 6,000 people, nope. black. And I'm on the stage, and I have to tell my, I told my little jokes. They laughed at the first part. Then it was the second part where it was a challenge where you got to, like, make up some stuff off the top of your head. And then it was one man somewhere in the room that went, boo! And people were telling him to shut up, but it was, he might as well have shot me in the fucking face. He was ugly. <laughs> he was ugly. He was ugly. Everybody knows he was ugly. But it felt like a shot in the face. It felt like, like I just got hit with a bullet and I just tried to keep going and smiling. And then they came out and they took me off the stage. And I, went, I remember going back into the back room and I was in my dressing room and the producer's like, you all right? I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, dang. <laughs> Everybody takes an L, right? <laughs> I don't understand why he didn't like me. I really tried my best. You said there's a show tomorrow for a hundred dollars. Where? Literally, I cried for about four minutes in front of these producers and then they said we were going out to this comedy club after and I was like I literally dried my face and said where where is it wow. and went and performed there and I felt like I redeemed myself like every time you take an L like you got to think about like taking when you take an L or bomb or like uh, my wife girlfriend says eat a bag of dicks <laughs> like I ate a bag of dicks <laughs> ate a bag of dicks tonight on stage it was disgusting <laughs> I, I felt horribly like, could you just say you took an L, like, a bag of them, girl? Mm. But anyways, when you, when you do that, it's just like when you learn how to walk. You know, remember, do you remember learning how to walk? I don't. Okay, well, <laughs> do you remember watching somebody trying to learn how yes. to walk? Yeah, yeah, my niece. Okay, yeah, your niece, right? And so she crawling and she stand up and she fall, right? But then she gets, she try to stand back up and she take a few steps and she's so proud. If she falls, she might cry. And then she resilience. get back up and fall. That's what comedy is. It's resilience. It's constantly bouncing back. It's, con it's learning how to walk all over again, but learning how to walk through words and learning how to control energy in a room. And can, like when you make people laugh, you are tickling people's souls. People you don't even know. You don't know their name. You don't know what they've been through. You have no idea what they went through the day before, the day after that. Or you, you just don't know. You're just sharing your experience and putting your soul out there. And like, that's what I try. I just put my, my heart out there. And you know, if people accept it, great. If they don't, whatever. If they hate me, I win because you felt more than love for me. Because it take a lot to hate. And then I win. Because I don't even know your ass. Well, talk about that, please. <laughs> because even in our conversations, you have, and you don't have to name no names, but you You've had, a, she will, let's be real. She, you've had a lot of haters. You've had a lot of haters. And the, like I was saying earlier in your intro, intro, a lot of comedians are bitter. A lot of comedians are depressed. A lot of comedians are je jealous. And you've talked about people who have not been willing to like lend a helping hand, who have tried to stunt your growth, who have, been, who have openly told you like you're not funny, which doesn't make sense because if you weren't funny, then why are you even talking to me? Why are you talking to me? And you would want me around to make you look better. So you have to be like threatened by me in some way. So what do you feel like, one, how did you, how did you um, kind of mute the voice of so many haters in the industry? And you know, how did you rise from that? Well, you can't always believe what people tell you. You know, real, huh? You can't? Well, no, we have five minutes. That's oh, okay. Damn, shocked. time flies. Right? Um, but you can't always... For, for, until question. I'm going to make this answer super... Oh. Sorry, until question. 
Let me answer this question super quick. Okay, so how do I mute the haters is what you say. How do I mute that or how do I pat, like these people tell you these mean things or this stuff to hurt you in your face. I remember watching an interview with Meryl Streep. This is part of why I like Meryl Streep. And the director told her she's just not beautiful enough to be a leading lady. Where's she Straight up though? told her basically. Where, where that casting director yeah, at? Not, not that Hello? Ha, ha. That wasn't even the cast. That was a director. Where, where that director at? That part. In, in that part. Not directing. Dead. And she's a, she been nominated over 22, 21 times for Oscars. So, like, you can't always believe the hype. Like, you can't believe what everybody's saying. You have to believe what your soul is telling you. You really have to listen to your soul and your spirit. Like, for real. That's where I get my fearlessness from, from my aunt. My, and maybe, maybe, I, maybe I hear voices. Maybe my soul is a multiple personality. I don't know. But it'd be like, bitch, you can do this. Fuck them. So what he said, you can't do this. You going to do it. And he going to be coming at you asking to open up for you one day. Which has happened. Like, always, the, and I feel like Who? your gut instinct Who? is always. Who? I feel, Rumpelstiltskins, bitch. Rumpelstiltskins. Who was it? Rumpelstiltskins. Who was it? Rumpelstiltskins. <laughs> Rumpel, 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 Rumpelstiltskins. Came at me once or two, three times again. Told him I couldn't do it because he was hating on me trying to give me that dude. I'll accept that. So, always this. I feel like this is the key. This is the key. The key is always listen to your first instinct, your first thought, the first feeling you have in your soul is usually right. So, when somebody tell you something, mean or negative or they're coming at you sideways what is your first instinct feel about it if your first instinct feel like they don't know what they're talking about it's right if they first if your first instinct is like maybe they have some truth in that i'm gonna take it and i'm gonna work, make it work for me thank you for the criticism and make it work for or if your first instinct is oh they scared of me they probably are and let them be scared because in their fear you will succeed you are so good at words. That's, I want to talk about like. Um, said, I'm, did you say I'm good at words? You're really good at words. That's because no, really I've good. been learning to read and watching YouTube videos. <laughs> but it's just the truth. I'm just speaking the truth. So can you talk about like? Obviously, you're successful now. Your path is just like there's just you could go everywhere. Can you talk about a time when you look back and you're like, ooh. I went about that wrong. Because I'm sure people are coming up to you now trying to be on, trying to be like, oh, look at me, trying to, trying to be like, oh, you know, look out for me, I'm about to be this. Can you think about a time when you were just operating wrong and what you've learned <laughs> <laughs> since then? Like, things that you would never do then that you know now. Things that I did then that I would never do now that yes. I did then, like. That you thought were gonna help, even <laughs> advice-wise. Yeah. Oh man. There's we could this. That's a that's a whole show in itself. Cause I was in super miss operation mode. I, Cause I didn't know no better. You know. Are you was, seeing other people do that? Is why that why you're recognizing, or did you? No. I. You know what? Yes. Well, two people. No. Well. When I see somebody doing something that I know that I used to do that was bad behavior or not gonna get me any that didn't work for me, if I see it, as soon as I see it, I say something. Like, I'm a see and say. So, like, uh, one of my homegirls, uh, hmm. Don't say the name, just say I'm what I'm not going to say no names, but she was, she was like, she was turned up in a situation where it wasn't no need to be turned up. You it's know what I'm saying? Huh? <laughs> Come on! The fuck? Well, I don't know. I don't, well, anyways, not. <laughs> you are hilarious, bitch. But like when I see in money moves situations, when you're making like decisions or like when to like, oh, okay, one of my homegirls, she was turned to, she, okay, she had an audition. Okay, I'm just telling you, she had an audition. She was super nervous. So she was drinking before the audition. And I told her, like, 
And she just, let me hit the blunt. No, you can't hit the blunt, bitch. You about to go get a job. <laughs> You're going to an audition. And she's like, no, this is, it's just, a, you know, like, it's an audition. It ain't like it's a job interview. Bitch, it is a job interview. <laughs> Instead of saying it's an audition, we're going to say it's a job interview. Because I, one time, one time, I showed up to an audition high. Now, it was one motherfucking time. I didn't remember that I had an audition and I was hanging out with the dope dealer because I was trying to get this acting class paid for. And then my agent's like, you got an audition at two o'clock. I was like, bitch, it's 12, what? And I had already been smoking weed at 10. And I went and I told, you know, I was just honest. I was like, I'm telling y'all right now. I'm feeling myself. <laughs> I don't even know if I should be in this 12 year slave thing. I don't. <laughs> How your day going? <laughs> you good? I'm hungry as fuck. Okay, you want me to lay on the floor? Oh, I'm supposed to sit in the chair. Fuck it. You know what? I'm gonna just leave. And I had to tell my girl, like, <laughs> she's like, let me just, no, I was like, no, you, you drink water right now. You drink water right now. And when you come out that audition, as a matter of fact, I'll drive you to the audition. I'll wait in the car for you. I'll roll up the best joint. And when you come out, we can smoke. We'll celebrate a great audition. What a friend. You know, like, don't, like, I mean, the, the beauty of being an artist is you can partake. But don't do it when you're working, except for like this. Hello, this is, this is work. <laughs> this is the job. But really, seriously, though, when you go into an interview, you're meeting new people. Do not do that. Like that, I feel like, was one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made, and I will never make that mistake again. And if I was to happen to be, like, hanging out with my friends or whatever, and my agent said, you got to go on audition for this, I would say, I can't right now. Can we reschedule it for another day or within the next eight hours? Because a bitch is fucked up. <laughs> be so, honest. Be honest. So... We're running out of time. She telling us she giving me the, but I have to ask this because I have to shout out the fact that you have a production company. You have a, a first look with HBO currently. You just had a, a clap it up. I'm about to be a boss like you. Issa. You already are a boss. You're working on a project with Zosha Rockmore, who I think is extremely yes, talented. Yes, super that talented. Just got announced. What turns you? Before we open up for questions, I'm gonna open up for questions. What turns you on creatively? Things that turn me on creatively is anything that makes me ask questions. If it's something that makes me want to ask questions, like why, how, yes, it makes my soul activate. Like, where I can feel, you ever be so excited? Like, you hear something and it make your ovaries turn a little bit, and then like this energy go up your chest, and you be like, yeah. And then all these questions pop into your head, like, well, why is this? What? Like, when I saw Black Panther, I'm gonna tell you, my ovaries was like, what he doing in a museum? Yes. And then all this shit, I was like, oh, Wakanda is Eritrea. Like, sorry, boo. No, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. But that's like the kind of thing that, that's what turns me on. Anything that makes me ask questions. Like yesterday I was in Boston. I went to the Boston Tea Ship Museum. You know when they had the Boston Tea Party when everybody's okay. throwing the tea off the yes. boat and all that? And I went there and I had so many questions. Now I want to do a black version of that because I know it was niggas there. They threw them they off said the boat. Them when they said them crates of tea was 400 pounds and they had to move them out the corner of the boat and lift them up in the pulley. I'm like, how many slaves did they have in the bowels of that boat pulling them things? And then how many of those slaves was like, they throwing tea in the ocean, but what about our people? Mm. Y'all tripping off of taxes on leaves, but what about our people? And then when I heard that they was getting it, feathers from the Native Americans, and then there's no Native Americans in Boston right now, what y'all do to them? I got questions. I want to make movies. Yeah. 
And you're about to make movies, okay? So at this point, I'd like to, if it's okay with you, open it up for questions. You guys, just to, yeah, questions, let's do it. Real quick, real quick, just want to make sure we our time is limited. Y'all are amazing. Thank you for coming. Don't tell your life story, please. She don't care. She just want to know what the question is. And don't ask me who bit Beyonce. Don't ask her. Don't ask me that, because I'm going to say it's you, bitch. And we also already, we know. Um, so patrons, patrons get a uh, priority, please. Thank you. Oh, I got the mic. All right. Okay. You went through a lot of traumatic experience and one of your defense mechanism was the laugh camp. So my question is, do you think it's really necessary to seek counseling? Because I'm also going through an experience and I just like to go to sleep and hope that tomorrow is a better day. No. Uh, you need to go to counseling. Have some. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you know what's so crazy is like uh, when you do your research and they say it take a village to raise a child, right? There's a village of people that surround you and communicate with you and talk to you and support you and look out for you. And what has happened, I think, in our society is we've become isolated and we put our little feelings on Facebook or whatever. And then people chime in that don't have no education, no guidance, no nothing. And then you just like, oh, I'm going to be to myself. No. Get you a bomb-ass counselor somewhere. If you got to go to the Department of Mental Health, if you got to just, like, Google counselors in my neighborhood, whatever, get you somebody, even if it's just a friend that you know knows how to keep their mouth shut or whatever, get you somebody to talk to. You have to have somebody really sitting in your face where you can look in their eyes and they look in your eyes and you can pour your soul. We need, as humans, there's a, there's a, you have to have camaraderie. You have to have, like God created Adam and knew that Adam was not good without the woman, right? You, he needed friendship. He needed another human. You need it. You can go to sleep as many times as you want to. You're going to wake up still feeling fucked up. Believe that. Talk to somebody. Find somebody you trust and talk to them. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Uh, another patron? Any other patrons? Patrons? Calm down. Calm. Sit. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Dude. They She's turn telling up. you. She knows. Yeah. knows. Y'all wait. Be patient. She's coming from a place of At class, love. God damn it. I know you ratchet, but shit. <laughs> hey, hey, Tiffany. Hey. I just recently seen you on The Last of the OG, and I wanted to, for you to just Thank talk a little you. bit about that part. It was hilarious. I loved it. Thank you. The last OG, you want me to talk about the part of Shannon, also known as Shay. Uh, I play Tracy Morgan. His character's name is Trey. And I play his, uh, his baby mama, basically. Uh, and he went to jail. I was in love with him 15 years prior to him going to jail. I loved the ground he walked on. I thought he was going to be the one. It, you know what's so crazy is it remind, when, I, when I got that role and I saw the script and everything, I was just like, dang, this was me 15 years. It really was me 15 years ago. And then dude go to jail. And I'm like, well, I got to find something better. <laughs> you know? And that's what Shay did. Uh, and she stopped calling herself Shay, started calling herself Shannon. Like back in the day, I used to call myself Tiffnicity because I thought... <laughs> I was full of tenacity. I don't stop. I don't quit. I keep it popping. That was going to be my game banger name. I want to be a game banger. Call me Tiffnicity, homie. <laughs> On the hood. And they be like, that shit too complicated, bitch. Your name Tiff. <laughs> Shout out to gang bangers. Know it. Hey, it's some good gang bangers out here. This, uh, they would never let me join. They wouldn't let, they, they saw something in me I didn't see in myself. And I feel like in that role, there was something that, you know, Trey saw in Shannon that he knew that she wasn't going to be the way he was. That's why she, like, because some dudes would bring you on a block with them to use you as a defense mechanism, you know, to deflect the police and all that. But he didn't do that to her. He says, you stay here. I'll be right back. I'm going to go to Cam Bar. I'll be right back. And he goes to jail for 15 years. And I'm pregnant. I'm trying to tell him, you know, and then boom, he find out he got kids. And wait till you see the next episode. Turns up. And I married me a white man. I sure did. Yeah. On the show. Can we talk about that for a second, Issa? What she want to talk about? You want to marry a white man? No, I mean, here's my situation, my scenario. I noticed that all the dudes that's successful that I like. Woo! Yeah. 
Issa, you gonna turn around on this conversation? All the black men that's successful that I like, no offense, white women, no offense, but I know this. Can I just, can I just, are there any black men in the audience today? <laughs> There are black men in this audience, and I want to know. And How I many of y'all have white women? Don't they be can't, afraid. They can't be afford it. They can't afford it now. <laughs> but ask them how many of them been. But, but, like, never mind. I'm not, I'm not going to get into I'm that. I'm just saying. I'm it's about audience to, question. I'm just saying. Can I just say this? I'm going to work my way to a certain level of success that's going to make black men so mad. I hope that my sisters support me. I'ma just do it for like a year. Issa, I'm single. This coochie tight. I haven't used it in nine months. What I wanna do is, what I wanna do is, I still wanna date black men, but only black men with exotic mothers. That's what they do to us. That don't mean you gotta, I'm not getting into this on stage with you. We gonna talk about this shit backstage, but. <laughs> you go with the, what the fuck you want. Cause what it's the somebody fuck out there. Is somebody out there that I, there's, yes. You I ain't told gotta be you. like, niggas is out here getting white women, so I'ma give me a white man. No, you I'ma give me a black man with a white mama. <laughs> or a black man with a Puerto Rican. Well, no, that's Puerto Rican still black. A, or a, get you, Dominican, get you black. a black it's man a with a black mom. I would like a black man with a black mama so that she could be my mama. But I would like that. I would like that, but it's not. <laughs> These niggas don't like me. <laughs> Next question, can we get a nigga that likes her uh, to ask a question? Uh, Issa, Issa, we got... Uh, with a good credit score. Um, Why well, you got me sipping, bitch? This is like an emotional. Uh, Issa, Jabriel's gonna choose the next, next question. Next question, I'm sorry. Jabriel. Jabriel got the next question. I'm sorry. Over the last few years, we've seen a lot of different biopics, you know, Aaliyah. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, Whitney Houston, Whitney Houston, and a few other bi. Oh, Roxanne, 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 I like that. Um, and Tiffany, and Issa, if you wanna answer, um, who would you want to be your person who? features you as a biopic or represents you as a as yeah I'm getting lost or whatever. But anyway who, who would I want to be like, me in a movie? Yes. And if you can't if you can't name them, what three characteristics would they have to have? The person that would be me in a movie and pass that back to Issa because I wanna hear what Issa say. <laughs> if I had to pick someone to be me in a movie, first off that person's not famous yet. But when they be me they going to be like, boom. And that person would have to have, to have um, fearlessness. So that means they got to have a lot of courage. No shame in their game. They have to have empathy. And they have to, uh, they have, to have fucking talent. <laughs> and 4C hair. That part. And if it's anybody watching this that don't know what 4C hair is, Google it. Because that's the best hair. Issa? <laughs> um, Diane from Blackish. Marce Martin, I want her to. She's just so cool. She going to kill the shit. She's. She got, she has everything. So that's, yeah. that's who I want to play me. I would be so honored <laughs> if she ever played me in that something. That would be, yes, that would be excellent. What are you going to bring to us in industry of podcasts and entertainment? I know that you have something brewing with HBO. Uh, as far as podcasts go, uh, I had bought a system off of Amazon, yes. and I was going to do it in my garage like a year ago, and then a bitch got busy. <laughs> so as far as podcasts go, I think really probably mid-2019, I'll launch a podcast, and I'll talk about like 
a lot of things. I was I was thinking about literally two days ago that you say this. I was thinking to myself, I should tweet out to my two hundred thousand followers, which is really bleak on Twitter, I guess. Yeah, two but two hundred thousand people that communicate like they're real people. You know, like Kevin, he has like millions, but only five hundred thousand are real. The Shade. rest are fake. Um, he bought the rest. Um, oh, okay. Post that shit. I told Kevin I was going to say that today. He was like, that's a lie, Tiffany. But I was like, but I, I feel like. Anyways, so uh, is it a lie? To, you don't have to do that. You I don't have to do that? You didn't literally have to. I didn't have to. You didn't have to. But I told him I would. Okay. And I keep my promises. <laughs> Even if it's bullshit. I'm going to keep the bullshit promise. Petty promise. Uh, so, yeah. What, is it petty? That's a petty promise if you said, I'm going to tell everybody that's at the sip tonight, I'm a, you box your followers, nigga. That's a petty promise. But it was a promise. <laughs> tell the truth, Shane the devil. <laughs> Kept my promise, nigga. Okay, so, but uh, he'll laugh at it. Anyways, that's probably, it's not facts. But what I will do, I believe men, Summer next year, I'll come out with a podcast. And I was thinking literally two days ago, I will have my followers ask me questions and I will bank these questions and I will answer them. And I'll make each one an uh, episode and we'll probably shoot like 40 episodes in like three weeks and launch that shit every week for 40 weeks and then go. And we'll do all that shit out of my garage. And when I say we, I was going to ask you to come to two. Easily. And I will fry chicken for you and make uh, you some I'm greens. I'm going to make you some spaghetti Yeah, she squash. cooks really great. If there's any, like, eligible niggas in the audience, for real, she I is do an excellent cook. cook. Very and well. she's a great host. I have to do the raffle at this point. I just want you guys to give it up for Tiffany Haddis for always speaking truth. Thank you. Bitch, you didn't have to do this. I want to tell you, we were supposed to do this in LA. She was like, I'm going to be in New York, but I still really want to do it. Can you make it work? And I'm like, bitch, yes.